Welcome back to H20, special relativity. In this section, and also the next one, we talk about electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is not part of the core of A20. We are not requiring electromagnetism, electromagnetism as part of the prerequisite. I will not test or include electromagnetism in the final. But nevertheless, it's interesting to discuss electromagnetic effects in the context of special relativity as it led to the development of special relativity in the first place. After all, the paper which describes special, the theory of special relativity is about the electrodynamics of moving bodies. And so let's have a look at the electrodynamics of moving bodies. And so here we have a source, a charge, which is moving with a velocity v. And moving charges or currents create magnetic fields. You can use your right hand and see particles are moving in this direction here. The electric field lines are, are curling around here. Good. So now I have a second charge, a test charge, which is moving with the velocity u. That test charge will experience a magnetic force. The force is equal to the test charge itself, q, t, times u cross b, the velocity cross the magnetic field. All right, so there is clearly a magnetic force acting on this test charge in this reference frame. However, if I now move into a reference frame where the source charge is stationary, a stationary charge is not creating a magnetic field. So the magnetic field is zero, hence the magnetic force on the test charge is zero. I can alternatively look at the reference frame in which the test charge is stationary. And so also here, because u is equal to zero, the magnetic force is zero. So clearly, we do have to treat magnetic and electric fields in some of a consistent manner as we treated time and space and energy momentum in a consistent manner. So we need a concept of electromagnetic field. And previously in this class, we looked at electromagnetic fields, light, um, before. The difference here is, and that's the context of the next section, is that we want to understand how we create those fields, how we can create electric and magnetic fields, and how it all works together. As a first activity, I want you con to consider a cube of length L with n electrons, with n charges inside, and everything is at rest. And what I want you to figure out is, what is the charge and current density, rho naught and j naught, of this cube? And as a second step, as you can imagine, I ask you to consider the very same thing from a moving reference frame as time, with some velocity u, which is the velocity um, of s prime with respect to s. What is the charge in the current density now in this new reference frame? Okay, I'd like you to figure this out. Okay, so now we look at this um, cube and the total number of charges is n. The length or the volume is L naught cube. And so the density is n divided by L naught cube. The current is zero. Nothing is moving, there's no moving charges, the current is zero. All right, this was rather straightforward. But now in our moving reference frame, the situation changes. Here, one of the directions, the direction in which we are moving is Lorentz contracted. So we have Lx equal to Lx naught or L naught times um, divided by gamma or times square root one minus u square over c square. The volume then of the same cube in the S prime reference frame is L naught cube divided by gamma. The number of electrons, however, is unchanged. So the charge density is the previous charge density divided by the volume. And if you if you compare, sorry, it's the charge divided by the new volume, which is the um, density times gamma. For the new charge density, we simply have to multiply the new current density. Sorry, for the current density, we have to multiply the charge density times the velocity. And again, we find rho naught times u times gamma. Okay, good. So if you look at those relations, they look very much like the rela relations between the current and the density charge density. They look very much like the relations we had between momentum and energy and time and space. And Lorentz transformation look very similar. So we can, motivated by this, uh, write a four vector, which is as a first component, t, t times 
it's the density, and as the first, second, and third component, the current. And you find that the invariant here is very similar to time and space, energy and momentum, um, given as the density where the charges are at rest. And that's the, in, the invariant, and you can calculate this for multiplying the four vector, or from squaring the four vector. Okay, so concept questions. Is the electric charge conserved on the Lorentz transformation? So did we actually change the charge? So we have the charge density here and the current here, but did we actually change the charge on the Lorentz transformation? The answer is no, we did not change them. So the charge is conserved or the charge is invariant on the Lorentz transformation. Is the electric current conserved on the Lorentz transformation? Or invariant on the Lorentz transformation. We should rather use invariant here. And the answer is no, it's not. So we have seen from the very first example that we start with the current which is zero, and then in the S prime frame, the current is of a certain value. So certainly the current as seen from two different observers is changed. 